We start a few miles east of Brecon at the Tallyhane Junction. I'll cover the Brecon section in a future episode, as this is where three lines met. The over 600 metre long tunnel was opened in 1816. The project was led by engineer John Hodgkinson as part of the Brecon to Hay horse-drawn tramway and the longest rail tunnel in the country at the time it was constructed. The tramway carried goods from Brecon Canal Basin and ran for 36 miles heading north to Hay on Wye. The villagers have converted their old telephone box into a tiny museum and information centre. The Brecon Merthyr Railway always struggled financially. And that's not surprising given that it was a rural railway having to cope with fairly extreme highland route over the Brecon Beacons. The route's around 25 miles, although that depends how you measure it given the track splits when we draw closer to Merthyr. Tallyclem Junction also served the Midwell section of the Cambrian Railway, and despite being a station in the middle of nowhere, it was an important hub. Many of the houses locally were built for railway staff, and you can make out the old engine shed in the loop. The main freight was coal trucks. At its height, it was transporting three and a half million tons of coal a year on this network. We head out southeast for a few miles before turning south over the river Ask, that eventually empties into the Bristol Channel at Newport. Incidentally, Ask is a Celtic word that probably means full of fish or simply water, hence it's quite a common river name, such as the River X in Devon, or Axe or Esk in Yorkshire. It is this section that is a lost railway. Much of the rest of the railway is either restored or repurposed as part of the Taft Trail. Thank you. 
Talibon Tonask, we hit Peak Bridge. There's a railway bridge over the road, a road bridge over the river, an old tram line over the canal, and a rail bridge over the canal, and an aqueduct over the river. The canal is part of the Monmouth and Brecon Canal that eventually connected up with Newport Docks. The Brecon and Merthyr Railway was subject to a number of accidents. The extreme gradients were often a cause. In December 1878, a goods and mineral train was descending the Seven Mile Bank. The train got out of control and derailed near Talibond, running down the embankment slope. The train consisted of 22 wagons of coal, three of goods, 11 empties and a brake van, and was worked by three 060 saddle tank engines. The total weight of the train was around 400 tonnes. The four crew died in the crash. The 060 saddle tank engines were the line's workhorse. The railway climbs about 250 metres, over 9 kilometres, so a back of an envelope calculation gives us a gradient of about 2.5%. The railway follows the Cavernel River and Valley, and above is the Brunner Tramway, built in 1815 that served the Brunner coal mine using horse-drawn wagons. Given the gradient, the horses probably rode down in a wagon under gravity and pulled up the empty wagons. The coal and limestone was brought down to be loaded on canal barges. Talibont's reservoir was built in 1939 to supply Newport. No villages were drowned when it was built. At the dam, the line becomes part of the Taff Trail, footpath and cycleway, although more suitable for mountain bikes, which goes up to the Brecon Pass. As we head to the top of the pass, we can take in the distinctive Brecon Beacons landscape and geology. The mountains on this side of the pass are old red sandstone from the Devonian period, a 16 million year period, around 400 million years ago when the seas were full of fish, but the land here was a moss forest with nothing bigger than scorpions and other small animals that were hunted or grazed the landscape. The sediments of sand and grit were laid down when this land was way south towards the South Pole. It was quite warm. As we head south, the slightly younger geology of the Carboniferous from about 330 million years ago is dominant, with alternating coal layers of ancient fern forests and the ancient seabeds of limestone. A tunnel is at the top of the Brecon Pass. It's Britain's highest at 400 metres, and it's easy to miss. 
Torpan 2 tunnel is 666 yards long, 609 meters. You can explore it if you like that kind of thing. But do take some wellies and a torch and a hat as water drips from everywhere. In 1947, a passenger train was trapped in the tunnel due to snow for days, with relief only coming when the army turned up from Brecon to dig them out. I'm unable to ascertain how many days. Either way, it doesn't sound very pleasant. This is the end of the Brecon Highland Railway, uh, which was restored with a narrow gauge line in 1980. Five miles of track take us down to Mercer. The Taft Trail follows the opposite side of the reservoir. Pontistic Reservoir was constructed in 1927. David Jones Locker, a BBC 1955 sitcom centred around a Welsh signal box, was filmed in part at Pontistic Station.
as we get closer to Merthyr, so the line branches out, the original line takes the higher elevation to Dollis, the Brecon Highland line headed towards Ida Stillworks, and the lower line takes a more scenic route to Merthyr Central. The Brecon Merthyr Railway originally headed south towards Newport. We can make out some of the track, but it gets lost in development. In the company's heyday, huge amounts of coal passed along this line, particularly during the First World War. This was to supply the British fleet to Scapa Flow and up with low smoke steam coal. These trains were called the Jellicoe Special, named after the first Sea Lord. They also used the now abandoned Cambrian line, which we'll be featuring in an upcoming episode. On from the Brecon Highland Railway Station at Penny Wern, traces of the railway can be identified as well as the Iver Steel Works. The scenic route swings west under Morlaix Castle. There's also a golf course, one of three in the town, all of them fairly extreme. Limestone quarries dominate the landscape. The main use was for smelting iron, iron ore being a combination of iron oxide and silicon dioxide, or sand, combined with the calcium carbonate in the limestone to form calcium silicate, or slag, which floats to the top. These man-made cliffs are liked by climbers and nesting birds. Just under the castle is a branch that goes through a tunnel. Three vents are visible above ground near the, near the Highland Railway Station. 
It merges a little bit beyond and joins the main line to Dallas. This section of the Taft Trail is tarmac, great for bikes or scooters. The Pont Saint Viaduct is one of two on this route. It's pretty stunning at 455 feet long, that's 139 meters and 92 feet 28 meters high. The station platform is visible a little beyond it. We continue on to Vena and pass a large quarry again for limestone. Having a viaduct with its gentle curve is 230 metres long and 30 metres high. The route had to avoid the lands and estate of the Kuvafa ironworks and the owners of the mock medieval castle, home of the Crochet family.
The ironworks were important in the 18th and 19th century, and once were a major supplier for the Royal Navy for cannon and cannonballs, so important even Admiral Nelson visited the works in 1802. It went into decline at the beginning of the 20th century, closing after the First World War, when the local iron ore reserves ran out. Only the base of the blast furnaces are visible now. It's important to note that Merthyr's always been a state of constant change and reinvention, a rural village in the middle of the 18th century, it quickly expanded into the iron capital of the country. With a revolution in industry and socially, it had one of the first uprisings by workers in 1830. When the iron ran out a century ago, it had to reinvent itself. And when coal went into decline in recent decades, the industrial areas have been repurposed as commercial and retail warehouses. The A470 obliterates the line at this point. We pick up the line again when it turns east, crossing the Taff and heads back up north towards Merthyr Station, a larger yard now being occupied by recent developments. So thanks for watching, look out for future journeys of Lost Railways, hit the like, subscribe and leave a comment and if you want to support this channel consider being a producer through Patreon.